Astronomers are quickly finding dozens of faraway galaxies that have never been seen before, as they look through the James Webb Space Telescope's huge amount of data. A little more than 200 million years after the Big Bang, there are many galaxies that date back to that time. These galaxies are part of this group. Before the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, GNZ11 was the most distant galaxy that had been proven to exist. Astronomers looked at this galaxy about 420 million years after the Big Bang. This gives it a redshift number of 11.6, which is a measure of how far away it is. Astronomers use this number to figure out how far away a galaxy is. The word redshift refers to how much the expansion of the universe has stretched the light that comes from a galaxy. When we look at a star with a higher redshift, we can see further back in time. After the first science pictures from the JWST were released, astronomers found galaxies with a redshift of 13 in less than a week. This number means that it has been about 300 million years since the Big Bang. Now, a new wave of science information is blowing that record out of the water. Some astronomers have found galaxies with a redshift of 20. This means that the record that was set before has been broken. If what has been thought to be true is true, then we are seeing these galaxies as they were about 200 million years after the Big Bang. At this point, none of these predictions of the redshift have been checked, which is a big caveat. For scientists to be sure of the lengths between these galaxies, they will need to use spectroscopy, which separates the light coming from an object into what is called a spectrum. Even so, it is clear that the JWST is more than capable of finding galaxies from a long-forgotten time. The galaxies were found using a variety of different ways. Using the gravitational lens made by the galaxy cluster SMACS J0723, a team of scientists led by Hao Zhang Yang from the University of Missouri-Columbia found 88 possible galaxies with a redshift of more than 11 including a few that are thought to have a redshift of 20. If the results are true, these galaxies would be the furthest away ones ever found. The universe is getting bigger, so these galaxies are now more than 35 billion light years away from us. In two more pieces, it is said that high redshift galaxies have been found in parts of the sky where JWST has only taken long exposures. No gravitational lensing was used to make these findings, as part of the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, or SEERS, study, the near-infrared camera on the James Webb Space Telescope took these pictures. Ten different parts of the sky were photographed for the study. The James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared spectrograph, or NEARSPEC, takes part in studies of six of these patches, while its mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, looks into four of them. A group of scientists led by Callum Donnan, a doctoral student at the University of Edinburgh, found a possible galaxy at a redshift of 16.7, which is about 250 million years after the Big Bang. Also, the researchers found five other galaxies with a redshift of more than 12. All of these galaxies beat the redshift record set by the Hubble Space Telescope, which came before the James Webb Space Telescope and now works with it. In the meantime, another team led by Stephen Finkelstein of the University of Texas at Austin used the same data from Sears to find a galaxy with a redshift of 14.3. This means that it was formed 280 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy is called Macy's Galaxy, after Finkelstein's daughter. This is enough evidence to possibly end the debate about what ionized the hydrogen gas in the cosmos and ended the cosmic dark ages. Over the years, scientists have suggested a number of possible explanations, such as radiation from the first stars and galaxies or from the first supermassive black holes. In their work, the group led by Donnan figures out the galaxy ultraviolet luminosity function, which covers redshifts from 8 to 15. This tool gives an average number for the amount of ultraviolet light that galaxies give off at certain points in time. The value has a lot to do with how stars are made, since the amount of ultraviolet light a galaxy gives off is directly related to the number of hot, young stars that were just made in that galaxy. 
According to what Donnan's team found, the amount of UV light that these early galaxy stars are making is more than enough to ionize the whole universe. The many galaxies with high redshifts that are being found right now can be thought of as babies of the universe. These galaxies are about 1,000 light years across and only have tens of millions of stars, while galaxies today can hold hundreds of billions of stars. Astronomers' best guesses say that the cosmic kids are much younger than 100 million years, and they may be as young as 20 million years. Astronomers have done a lot of study, but they have not been able to find any of the first galaxies in the universe, which may be beyond redshift 25. But the most recent galaxies found are from generations that came right after the last ones and scientists can tell that these galaxies are still in the beginning stages of forming. The amount of ultraviolet light that has been redshifted into longer wavelengths of infrared, making it visible to JWST, and the number of high redshift galaxies that it is finding so early in its mission show that galaxies were common in the early universe. This is what we can say because JWST has found galaxies with high redshifts. Unlike what some people think, it's possible that the rate of star formation slows down gradually as we look back further in time, instead of stopping all at once after Redshift 11. The team led by Finkelstein said in their report, should follow-up spectroscopy confirm these redshifts, it means that our universe was already bright with galaxies less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. After finding these potentially important galaxies far away, the next thing to think about is how far back in time JWST can see, and if that will be enough to find the very first galaxies that ever existed. Maybe just 100 million years after the Big Bang, because primordial galaxies would have been brought into view by lucky gravitational lensing, this would take a lot of luck. When scientists first started making the Webb probe, one of its main goals was to look at the first galaxies in the universe. This goal is still one of the most important ones for the project. These galaxies are cosmic relics. They are so far away that their light takes billions of years to reach Earth. We think that they have been kept just as they were close to the beginning of the universe, when light that now reaches Earth from faraway galaxies first left them. No one knows for sure what those first objects will look like. But the scientists who work on the Webb telescope can't wait to find more galaxies. Infrared light can't be seen by people. And telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope that can only see visible and ultraviolet light can't pick it up either. Webb, on the other hand, can look at old sunlight that has turned so red that it is now infrared. Co added, Webb goes to longer wavelengths than we could see before with Hubble. So we can see further back in time. Because Webb is both bigger and more sensitive than Hubble, it can pick up very faint light and is therefore a better tool for studying the most distant galaxies. We can also get a full picture of what these early galaxies looked like, the expert said. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.